give his brother an opportunity, who is also a U.S. citizen, a citizen, give his brother the opportunity to come and practice medicine in the United States, the medical doctor. So he went over there and, uh, and was doing fairly well. He decided to take his buddy to a rally to promote democracy, okay, a peaceful protest. And as soon as he got to the rally, uh, he was detained and put in a prison. Okay, he was placed in a prison. Uh, I was over there in, in March. And he, he was in prison uh, since January 4th, away from his family. No due process. Okay, no due process, no contact. Uh, he had no f contact with his family. Well, I went over there and I said, I want to see him. I want to go and see him in the prison. We went over there. He told me his story. I demanded that he be released, along with Sudanese citizens. Not just American citizens, Sudanese citizens. Uh, so uh, we, did, we had a press conference and I demanded that he be released along with uh, some of his friends. And uh, after we left, on our way to the United States, he was released. But that's the power that we have in the United States Congress. We have a voice, folks, and uh, we're obligated. We are obligated. We should uh, use that voice uh, to free our fellow Christians around the world, and that's what I plan on doing. So uh, we must ensure that those who would seek to sow fear reap only swift justice and return. As we gather here to discuss the protection of our Christian faith, I'm reminded of the millions of people around the world who are not able to express their religious beliefs freely. Today should also serve to encourage all of us in this room to rededicate ourselves to the cause of advancing religious freedom and safety from religious persecution around the world. America must remain a beacon of principled courage, recognizing and promoting the basic human rights of all people. If we remain silent in the face of these transgressions, we neglect that moral, that moral imperative and do so at the peril of civil society. I promise you that I will never back off on my commitment to this fight. I ask you to join me in that resolve. Talk to your members of Congress. Write letters to the editor of your local newspapers. Hold prayer vigils in your communities and invite local officials, friends, and co-workers to raise awareness of the atrocities that are committed around the world every day for the simple reason of preventing people from exercising their faith. But we may not be able to snuff out every act of violence. We can surely work to extinguish international indifference. We can give voice to those who are silenced. Our brothers and sisters are suffering, dying, and being displaced. They are coming up to us, and we must not let them down. Thank you so very much for having me here, and God bless every one of you. Ten minutes and then we'll start our official program. We want to thank the congressman for taking time to stop by and be with us. And a few more members will be joining us after Rhodes as well. So, yeah, thank you.